Hi, hello and welcome. The stream was supposed to start at 1 p.m. today, but we had some internet issues that was out of our hands. Some servers went down, but we are back live because we, we don't give up. We keep the show going and we are right back with the Transfuser stand at EGX 2019 in London. So we're going to quickly run through the teams today as we are on a very tight schedule since we are, well, we had to start a bit later. But that doesn't stop us from seeing the great and amazing games. And we're going to start off with a cut out of the casket. And cut is certainly out of the casket in this one. We can have a peek at the gameplay and I'm going to ask if one of the developers has a minute to talk about the game. Uh, hello there, will you have a second to talk about the game? Yes, of course. What's your name and what's your team? Hi, I'm Christina. I'm from Team Wagtails. And we are showing off Cat Out of the Casket. We're a team based in Belfast, Northern Ireland, in the Pixel Mill. That's amazing. So what is the game about? What should I expect if I get a chance to play? So it's a game about dead cats. <laughs> it's a game about dead cats. Dead cats catching dead mice. We call it a collect-a-thon puzzle game, where you run around the level collecting these uh, dead mice who are also running away from you at the same time. So you can possess the environment to solve puzzles to catch these mice better. That's awesome. I mean, I must say, by looking at the art, you did manage to make dead cats is somewhat adorable, I would say. <laughs> well, that's what we're kind of going for. Creep. Yeah. I think I think good job to the design team, certainly. Uh, will I have a chance to perhaps go on and play, or are we, or do we have to wait for this person to finish? Well, the levels are 60 seconds long, so you won't have to wait very long. Okay, so we'll take this opportunity to maybe talk more about the game. What was your inspiration for it? Uh, just the inspiration was we love cats and we love paranormal things and we love really cute low poly art style. So we kind of brought all those things together that we do in our personal artwork and this game came out. <laughs> I think it represents everything that you listed very clearly, I would say. It is certainly cute. The poly art is something that I'm fan of myself, so I quite like that. And um, well, they are ghosts, so you tackled that one quite well. Yeah. We think it's really reminiscent of like GameCube games, so it's kind of like kind of nostalgic for us for like early 2000s games. But uh, rather than completely emulating that style, we just sort of did our own take on it. I see. I think that's awesome. Uh, I might be getting a chance to play. So since we're on a tight schedule, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, any pro tips I should or I could get from you perhaps when playing the game? Possess, you can possess the TV, the vase and the radio to draw the mice to you. Don't chase the mice because they'll just run away from you. So I need to... You need to trap them. I see, I see. I need to trap them. Okay, let's have a sit down and let's play the game. You go fast, you go I got 16 seconds, seconds. okay. So if you go near an object and press B, and you can see you're changing the channel. Hey, you got one. Might not work a second chance. Oh, I didn't get him. Oh, time up. Do I have any form of sprint? Oh. So do you want to retry and have a, a go at a full 60 seconds? So you go near the objects and press B to possess them. You can possess the radio, the TV, and the buzz. There is no sprint, which is um, means you gotta you gotta be tricky to catch these mice as they run a bit faster than you do. There you go. I think I managed to trap it in between the vase and the TV <laughs> somehow. Our record for beating the level is 12 seconds, which is madness. That's, that's quite quite impressive. I think the next time I would be playing, it, I would certainly go with the vase, as I, I think the vase is the most powerful. So sometimes when you use it, it pushes you out of the way like that. Could it, could it, could it be because I'm... I think it's because I'm moving that way, and every time I decided to move that way, it sort of launches me out. I'm actually going to try to make use of that mechanic here. Oh, <laughs> I went the wrong way. Almost had it, almost had it. Oh, okay. One more try. 60 seconds, let's go. I think what I really like about the game is the ability to possess the objects. It's remind, it reminds me of that that mod from, is, was it G-Mod? Um, 
there was that uh, application on Steam that allows you to the, do the 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 prop hunt. Garry's mod, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I, that's exactly what I meant. Yes, stuff like that. That's that's exactly what I had on my mind. But it takes much more. Uh, it takes a different approach, and the police it makes it quite clear and easy to understand. Yeah, so it just, it just continues to do that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get 12 seconds here, but I'll certainly aim to do my best. I'll go with the vase. I think vase is super powerful. Oh, whoa! <laughs> I outplayed the mice. <laughs> Wait for the mice to come out and then trap, co cover the hole with the vase so they can't go back in. Hey! Oh, I see. Okay, I did it. Two out of three. I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely take that. I'll take that and I'll take one of these. Look, so cute, so cool. If you are at EGX, certainly come over. There is so much free stuff. But because I'm walking around with the microphone, I'll only be, be taking this. And um, would you like to say anything more about your studio? And. Any, any plaques you got? Any social media you got for us? Yes, so you can follow us on Twitter at, at Wagtails Game. Sorry, go ahead. You can follow us on Twitter at, at Wagtails Game. We're really hoping to get this game published on Switch and on Steam. So if you follow us there for updates, we're a really small team from Northern Ireland. So we really appreciate all the support we can get. Yeah, that's absolutely. I think it was quite fun. Just a question from like, a, I'm a huge MOBA player, and just personally, I'm wondering if you would be uh, maybe considering adding in multiplayer. I think that would be quite. It's cool. definitely something we've been looking at. Definitely, we're going to investigate it. I think it's similar to kind of couch co-op games on on Switch, and I think it would be perfect for it. So we just got to do some investigation into that. I loved it. I loved it. I think that was amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe getting the 16 or 12 seconds, whatever the record was, if I get a chance. And for now, we have to speed run the transfuser today, so we're going to head to the next game. It was a pleasure talking to you. Enjoy EGX. Thank you so much. So, next on our list, since we have to skim through the transfuser games swiftly, why don't we do so by playing some flying games, perhaps? Planes are fast. Why don't we have a go? Adis, hello. Which one of you guys may I talk to about the game? All of these guys. Okay, line up for me then. Let's let's talk to the to the entire team. Let's go. Okay, what are your names then? Fusebox Incorporated. Name Vlad. I'm Mihai. Alex. Okay, wonderful to meet you three. So, what is the game about, and what is your studio? Well, we tried to create a VR mobile game. Yeah, it's based on Android, yeah, and we tried to create a mobile flight simulator, arcade dot fight. I see. Where did the inspiration for your product come from? Uh, I personally am passionate about flight simulators and pretty much every single simulator available. Did you, did you put a lot of emphasis on sort of a realistic experience of the player? As, as you can see, it's a low poly, so uh, it's, it's more of an arcade, yeah. Was there? I'm seeing. I'm able. I'm able. I will be able once I have a. I have a go at the game. Able to shoot some some rockets. Is there? Is there player versus player modes in it? Sorry. Is there player versus player modes? With uh, yeah. So it's a multiplayer. Yeah. It's a multiplayer. That's amazing. I would love to have a try. Yeah. Let's go straight straight to it. Oh. Um, it's looking good. It's looking good. <laughs> That's all right, no worries. So, when I'm fighting with other planes, are the rockets, do they catch up to them automatically? So, are, are they like self-directed at them or do I have to have actually some skill and good aim? Uh, the rockets, you can shoot them straight ahead and I'll follow a target. Or if you look at target look enough, it will lock on it and the rockets will follow. How long do I have to look at it for it to follow it? Two, three seconds. Two, three seconds. I think that's a healthy mechanic. Yes, but you need to be really skillful because everyone else is really fast inside the game. So you need to be turned like really precisely after them. I see, I see, I see. How is it? Any, any tips? Any tips for me? How do I win? Um, you win by taking the flag. We're playing capture the flag. So by taking the flag, from the enemy base and bringing it back to your base, so scoring points. 
Sorry, I just found it quite innovative. So it's capturing the flag, but in the air. Uh, yes, so the flag will be on top of the enemy base, so you just need to fly through their base and go back, loop back to your base. I think that's very cool. I, I feel I feel like that's uh, very intriguing. At least that's something I haven't uh, seen before in quite a few games I've played in my lifetime. I think it's quite cool. Uh, what was the... How did that idea come to you? Well, um, we're kind of passionate about simulators with planes, so we wanted to make one, but we wanted to have some extra elements, so we decided to bring a dogfight inside and make it look more arcade. That's where the low poly style comes from. Uh, what about the flags, the, the sort of capture the flag mode? Uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the story behind that? Um, no specific story, it's just more, uh, more fun to play with other people rather than just uh, shooting each other. So, uh, sorry, would you agree that you made, made it that way just because that's what, it's something you would find fun yourself as well? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's very good. I think that's a very good sign, especially in game design, certainly. Okay, I'll pass the microphone to my colleague and I'm going to have a go at the game. How do I do it? Huh? Oh, you can Just put, put it on. Headset, yeah. You also have this uh, setting for the lenses over here, so it's comfortable for you to see. Yep. It's kind of sliding off of my head, but I can manage. Okay. We have a tutorial, so uh, in front of you you have two panels, yeah? If you yeah. press the cross, uh, you will have a two-minute tutorial. So I use this to throttle up and down, okay. I use left trigger to change attitude, okay. Quite, uh, quite intuitive so far. It's so very clean as well. It's a, uh, right stick to steer left and right. Yeah. Uh, you can roll the jet. Oh, that's so cool. That's amazing. It's so easy to do as well. That's awesome. And then um, right trigger, I fire. Oh, that's really cool. So, yeah. So what's gonna happen is he, ha he he has his own view on the VR camera, but my colleague over here will play another version on the screen. So you're gonna be able to see uh, their fight one v one. The tutorial is pretty much done at the moment. So what you have to do is to press on the options button. And now you are back on the main menu. And I the multiplayer. Just choose a team and let me know which color you choose. Yeah, and press cross. I'm going to go ahead and join. I'm going to join. All right, so I'll join you as red team. So again, the scope of the game is to fly to back to my ship, pick up the flag, and bring it back to your ship. Let's see how it goes for me. What does the... I'm seeing something in the air. Uh, some sort of package. That's a pickable object, so you can get some health, uh, a shield, and some missiles. Yeah. It's randomly generated, so. Trying to go for this flag here. Oh, I'm getting shot at. I'm definitely oh. getting shot at. So oh, no. I think I cut. Oh, that wasn't the flag. Okay, more I know. <laughs> so the big red pole on the ship is not the flag. It's actually part of the ship. Oh no! We just froze on like 10 times over. Hello. So at the moment we are three in the same room. How many players would be able to access? Uh, now we are using some free servers, so it's up to 20 players. Yes. Okay, so I need to take some missiles. 
Now I have 12 missiles, so I'll just take both of you down, hopefully. Outmaneuvering the missiles. I see you. We are on a short schedule, so I have to end it there. <laughs> okay. How do you feel? It's very fast paced. I have to, I have to get used to the controls. Uh, I find it very fun. When I was younger, uh, the flying games, I found them really, really exciting. I found the idea of being in the air and being able to travel anywhere yeah. and like outmaneuver other planes, etc. I, I, I used to find that very cool. And when I grew up, any games that have to do with flying, you already got me on board, pretty much because of that. Well, 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 glad you liked it. Yeah, no, it's it's very cool. It's very cool. So, is it gonna? I noticed you are playing on the monitor. Yeah, it's, the same it's, build. it's the same build, but on Windows. I see. Are you looking to keep that VR, or are you looking to make it a PC version as well? To be honest, uh, we are going to take the VR part out, and uh, we are looking to develop for uh, mobile mobile phones. I see. I see. That's an interesting choice. So, your studio is called Fusebox. Do you have any plugs for our stream? Where can they find you online? Uh, well, uh, we have a Twitter, we tweet a Twitter page and also an Instagram page. So yeah, if you search for Fusebox Inc, we are going to be there. You Google Fusebox, you'll find them on Twitter and Instagram. So that's amazing. Wings of Reality, very catchy name. And I, I, I'm really getting it, given that it's a, it's a VR as well, reality. It's a, it's a very smart name. Thank you so much for having a chat with me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Take care. Enjoy EGX. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. Great stuff. Okay, that was me flying about. Uh, I crashed into a into a flag. <laughs> I was alright. It was very very fun. Uh, extremely fast paced. I feel like, but I would play it again definitely. Next up, we got Hypocon. Hypochondronomicon. There we go. Would you like to repeat that? Hypochondronomicon. See, I've broken it down. <laughs> I see, I see. That's a, it's such a tongue twister, I feel like. So the etymology is hypochondria, necronomicon. Uh, it turns the beliefs of the inhabitants of this fantasy world to life. Okay, now that we are getting into the game, your team is called Disco Reptile. That is correct. What's the story behind the name of the team? It's a very long one and doesn't really bear going into, but uh, I kind of... Like if you could condense it. <laughs> Say again? If you could condense it, like one sentence. Uh, it was based on a sprite that I made about like eight or so years ago, and that was one of the first times I was experimenting with pixel art. I see, I see, that's right. Since we are on a tight schedule, I would love to play your game if I have a chance. Yeah. Play the game? I would love to play the game. Okay. Yeah. Right. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm excited. Excited big fan. Hypo Conjury Nomicon. Yes. I did it! Woo. Woo I already feel like I'm winning. Okay. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay. Right. All right. I might be old, but I've never experienced a game cube these controller. For the, these for the menus, this for uh, this for confirm, this for back, nice. this for help. I mean it's it's quite intuitive still, but I was just quite surprised to, to see it I suppose. Oh, it straight away. I'm getting like an RPG feel, but with a it's so very stylized. Oh, I bet you do. Very stylized. Thank you. <laughs> so only one hero can enter. Am I gonna get to pick? Oh, I actually do get to pick. Let's see. Let's see. Do we want to be Jack? Do we want to be Raven? Do we want to be Nora or Darren? I think I'm gonna go as a raven, some mysterious of you magician. Are. Of course you are. Of course I am, of course, of course, of course. Just get through this, I don't think we have time to read this out. No, we don't. All right. So I'm fighting a, a can with a metal arms. Apparently, raven finds it very threatening, so a very threatening some object. Training. So training, let's try the slash, because I don't think hound will be that useful. Ooh, it seems like, that's a very interesting mechanic. So, do I combo? So you have to press B to take your skills back if you think you've made a mistake. I see, you have I see. Four energy, 
so you've used them all with your two slashes. You I see. One and slash, or slash and on if you're feeling spare. And then I just start the battle and I let them battle it out. You absolutely So can. usually the other player will have some abilities they can choose of their own. Yes, you catch on quick. That's amazing. I, th I think now it's because I... It's, it resonates with me, the idea for the game. I quite yeah. like it. I think it's very cool. So I will not be able to see what sort of abilities the enemy is picking, correct? Oh, you'll be able to see the abilities uh, after this one. This is just a test just to get people into the so, uh, battle system. No, but like as they are picking them, can I see what they are picking? Yes, you can You can see what they're going to execute in these. Oh, I see, I see. So, so it's you very... can start planning your own skill set based around what they're going to do. I see, I see. I was thinking more like PvP. I guess, but I'm yeah. against... Uh, I see, I see, okay. Let's start. Execute, yes. There is a slash, there is a HP bar going down. So if you'd have haunted it, you would only be taking two damage, but instead you took four. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting a metal come to hit me back, I guess. My bad, my bad. <laughs> if you hover over the move, it tells you... Oh, I see, I see, I see. So haunted enemies take double damage from attacks. So even though enemy may not be attacking, it's actually very useful to, to use it. So I suppose I You've think got a new skill as well. we got a new skill. So we can de-hunt the enemy and heal for two. Yes. So first we need to hunt them. I will do it like this. We're gonna hunt them first, but then we're gonna use slash and top it up with the harvest. There you go. <laughs> and let's see how it goes. Let's execute it. I regret to inform you you can't harvest something that's dead. <laughs> oh! Oh! So what did I just try to harvest? So you can haunt and harvest right uh, two in a row and the enemy won't actually hit you. It won't hit you for enough that you can't heal back. But not a lot of people catch on to that without me giving them hints. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do this battle and then talk about my experience in a second. Uh, not enough energy, okay, let's start it. It's just a simple rat, right? I should survive it. I mean, but then again, I wasn't expecting my character to be so powerful. Okay, okay, I could be playing this for hours, to be honest with you. I really like the idea, I really like the idea. Where did it come from? So, it was basically just from playing RPGs, and a lot of, like, the sort of tougher bosses, they will just sort of insta-kill your party with no warning, and I thought, what if you could strategize around that? And what we ended up coming up with was more of a puzzle than an RPG. Uh, but I sort of liked that you could give them commands. And it also came from part of uh, Warcraft 3. So uh, like if you would, would give a worker unit uh, a command and then you would uh, shift click and give them another and I'll, a command and I'd be like, this is great. I'm so you so for this. Yeah, you sort of expanded on a very simple mechanic and you made it like core of a game. But then again, you made it evolve as well. Oh, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> at, at least that's how I see it. Was that not the thought process? That's what we're trying to do, I suppose. I think you're doing very well. I, I, I enjoyed it and I was able to really tell straight away what the goal of the game is and how mechanics are supposed to work. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I didn't expect the first, first monster, though, to attack me back, though. I, I guess that's because I haven't played RPGs for a while, I suppose. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. It was, it was great. I really like how well it's stylized. The, the combat mechanic, genius, genius, I love it. Okay, so, any any plaques on this reptile? Oh yes, uh, I'd like oh, there to be a party. There, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'd just like to thank the people that uh, have found me on twitch.tv slash disco reptile and the, uh, they're watching this now, so hi guys, this is what I look like. <laughs> thank you, thank you as well, thank you for watching. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for plugging. Thank you. Uh, any... <laughs> okay. Disco Reptile, where can we find you? Where can we learn more about the game? Uh, so www.discoreptile.net uh, Click the link for Hypochondronomicon and you've got our Twitter, our Discord. Join the Discord. There's a lot of, there are a lot of good people there. <laughs> okay, awesome. Great stuff. Uh, thank you so much for letting me to play, play the game. Uh, enjoy EGX. Enjoy that transfuser. Uh, best of luck. Cheers. And I hope to get, the, to, get to play the game again. You will. <laughs> awesome, awesome, great stuff. Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure Take care. You. Enjoy EGX. Thank I'm you so much. Sorry? I'm also on the team too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Eh, uh, now, now, now. Now that we are done with some great, genius, simple, but well thought out mechanics, we're gonna move into something more dynamic, more fast paced, which is Recall. Recall is a game, from what I've seen, 
where you play as guns against other guns. Well, so let's see how it goes. If I can get a chance to play to one of play, talk to one of the guys is what I meant to say. Hello. Hello. Who can I talk to about the game? Okay. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. What's your name and how are you today? I'm Oliver and I'm good. How are you? I'm amazing. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Bartosz. Awesome. Great stuff. What's your team and what's your game? So we're Superiority Complex and we're making Recoil, which is a two to four uh, competitive, sh two to four player competitive shooter where you are the gun. Uh, you are the gun. You are the gun. Every shot has a recoil force attached to it, and that's the main way of moving around. When you jump you, and you hold down A, you look down, so every shot blasts you up. It acts like a double jump or a triple jump or however many jumps you have left in your chamber. So your weapon is as much weapon as it is your moving around device, per se? Yeah. It's, it's as much your, the gun you choose is as much your uh, like attack uh, method as much as it is your mobility or d your defense. Actually, now that you said that, something I'm very curious about. Different guns, do they provide different sort of speed to move around the map and different uh, damage output? Yeah, so the revolver is like our mid to long range character. So you've got six shots in that chamber and you can kind of bunny hop around and uh, aim your shots. The shotgun delivers like very big powerful blasts. So you can do the what, what we call in the studio is like the one hit KO, where you uh, blast yourself to get like into point blank range and then hit him right there. And then the, uh, there's a Tommy gun as well, which is an automatic weapon, which is a, if, you, if you hold the trigger down too long, it's a bit like a fire hose, you can lose control. Um, in terms of HP of the player, something that I'm interested in, how many shots does it take, for example, on, you, you, you mentioned different damage, etc. how you can one-shot players, uh, what's that sort of base damage, what's the usual uh, combat time? So it depends for um, each character, with the uh, revolver, obviously, you've got a, it's a sharpshooter, so, uh, each shot can do anywhere between a third to a half of the health. The shotgun is based on distance, so you can uh, play the distance game and chip away at enemies, or you can get right up close for that one hit. And then the Tommy gun is a lot of little hits. So you can, if you, if you uh, flank someone and corner them really bad, you can just spray and uh, eliminate their entire health bar, or you can pick them off gradually from a distance. Is there a way to, for example, escape from a shotgun if I'm playing a revolver or something? Yeah, so by holding down left bumper, the gun will do a 180 and it will uh, point in the opposite direction of where you're moving. So that becomes your kind of panic button, your escape button, and it also is... It's like a boost. Yeah, it's a boost. And you can, you can, um, it'll change your momentum when you use it. So you can cut corners sharply, you can change, you can do 180 on a dime. It, it allows you to be way more mobile than you would ever be as a guy running around. I, I, that's amazing. Uh... I come from a very competitive background, so I'm looking forward to playing it. It seems very fast paced as well, so I can't wait to jump into it, if I may. Go ahead. Okay, let's go. Let's have a seat and let's let's pew pew in a fashionable fashion. <laughs> okay. All right, then. I will go with. I quite like the. I think shotgun. Is, it should be quite simple. So yeah. I'm a shotgun. Well, what what am I picking shotgun. here? Oh, so these are the supers. So we've got two currently in the game. Can you repeat that, sorry? So we've got two supers currently in the game. The missile essentially acts like a, a homing missile. You guide it yourself. Uh, it highlights any players in the area, and you can guide it towards them to kill them. It's basically an offensive. Uh, the time sphere is a second one. It's more of a tactical uh, super. Essentially, it acts like a spider's net. Uh, anyone caught inside, it gets slowed down, making them easier targets. So it's more used as a strategic move than a offensive. Oh, I need some kills, please. I see. I see. So some great, great contrast in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the sphere. I feel like it would allow me to. Well, I feel like that's kind of suitable for my place. I'm gonna go with this one, um, this one as well, and then we're gonna go with red because why not? Uh, sensitivity. Any recommendations? Um, I usually have it about halfway. I'll so keep really it up a, a bit, a, a bit lower, just in case it goes <laughs> all over the place for me. Right. And vertical, I'll just, I'll just go with the same. Yeah, keep it Invert right. controls, what should I go with? Um, depending on your preferences, um, we've only put that in for after player response for it. But most people usually play without it. Okay, I can tell straight away what I really like is instant response from the game. And I just found a. Found me. I found you, but I also am trying to find a jump button. Uh, no, sorry, a reload button, reload button. Reload is X. X, I see, I see. The caveat to air reloading is you can't reload in the air. It always has to be on the ground to stop yourself from juggling. I see, I see. Oh! 
I'm out of ammo, but I got a hit. Oh, I actually got a... Okay, this is one of few games where I actually am ahead. <laughs> Believe me or not, but... There have been some bosses in few games here at Transfuser in EGX that were rather challenging. So, I want to try this. Let's boost myself. Oh, this is... It's, it's so satisfying. It's extremely satisfying. Yeah, that so, was the key to the gameplay. We wanted it to be focused on movement. Would you like to repeat that? Momentum was the key to the gameplay. We wanted it so it was quite liberating for the player. They wanted, if we wanted people to get out quickly, we have these bo these options. I see. I think I think the movement is very it's very satisfying to move around the map, and the dynamic, uh, uh, the way how the player can jump around and then cut the corners, as explained previously, and sort of do these quadruple jumps is, I think that's quite innovative and extremely satisfying. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Okay, let's have a go, let's see if I can get another kill, and then we'll talk about the experience a bit more. Should I start the actual game, or just in a free lobby right now? Let's, let's, let's start an actual game, let's see. Let's see. Let's see how I do. So it's a Tommy gun versus a shotgun. The match right, will begin the shortly. So, we just play it to kill each other. so the game mode is just deathmatch and our goal is to eliminate each other. And I see a cannon in the... Oh, that's very creative. That's very creative. He had a beard and a, and a moustache. Very cool. Oh, let's perhaps turn around. Oh, so I started drifting there. Is that... How so does drifting. drift come in? Um, if you saw the sparks flying out of your gun, that is how you build up your super meter, which is the blue bar beneath your health. It's the most effective way to build that up. Otherwise, you can start killing people and you'll get it as well. There you go, it's filling up just by that. I see. So, I fill it up by, well, uh, so killing other players? Mind. Yeah, so using the 180 degree and then firing, and then you'll see yourself like grinding across the floor, sparks go flying. Let's try, let's try. So let's reload our ammo and attempt, attempt drifting. It, this map requires a lot of, well... This one's quite, ni you got to be nimble with this one. Yeah, you have to be very nimble with this one, something I noticed there as well, go. certainly. Oh, I actually, damn, I'm actually 2-0, damn. There we go, your super's now fully charged. So let's use the super, let's see what the super does. So that's a trait, it's essentially oh, a projectile I see. fire. It's a specialized projectile. And it it slows, slows me as well. Exactly. Oh, some slow motion, slow so it's motion like a action. Sword. It can work on you just as much as anyone else. I see, I see. I think that's very cool. Okay, I'm going to stop here, however, because uh, I got a few questions. I got a few questions about the gameplay itself. Are we heading back to... Mr. Developer here. Okay, so regarding the gameplay, will it have mouse support and keyboard or is it going to be a controller based game? So we plan to uh, launch first on PC, so that would include uh, mouse and keyboard supports. That's, oh, you already got me in there kind of with that. Uh, well, we can't uh, go from the stand and sort of uh, not mention the fact that we are playing as guns to shoot another guns. Where did the idea come from? Uh, so the uh, original idea for Recall was a game I made over the summer as a single player experience because it was summer and I had nothing to do. And it was just one of those, you know, you're sat there bored out of your mind thinking, what if I was a gun? What if I could use the momentum? And then everything else kind of felt followed from that premise. It seems like it, um, it came natural to uh, put things together once you had sort of the, the template idea in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like one thing came after the other. Like, what if you had the guns? What if you could shoot yourself uh, around the level? What if you could use it to jump? What if you could use it to boost? Okay, what happens when we're going fast? Oh, we can power slide, and then so on and so forth. I think, I think that's very cool. Uh, name of your studio, Superiority Complex. How did that come to be? So, Recoil began as a um, student project. And when you're in a, in a course uh, at university, you hope everyone is um, an adult, but there aren't. So, uh, in, in one lecture one day, uh, there, there was a group of uh, our classmates talking over the lecturer, and it became a, 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 a shushing contest where we had to shush them about five times. This was also on the day when we had to come up with names for our team. And uh, as, we're as we're throwing names back and forth, uh, we hear that they said we had a superiority complex. And then as we're discussing it, it just 
snapped like that. Like, oh my god, that's a great name. So that's the origin. I see, I see. So it, it, it fits within you with your story as well. Fits within you with your story as well. Where, where we could see the game in the future and when? Uh, we hope to launch um, on itch.io sometime in the near future. So a, a short playable demo. I think, I think that's awesome. I'll definitely be playing the game. Thank you so much. Uh, I wish you best of luck at Transfuser. Uh, just before we go, how are you enjoying the Transfuser and EGX so far? It's, it's exhausting. <laughs> but uh, it's almost done. <laughs> Apart from exhausting, it was amazing and a, a wonderful experience. Like I would, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. That's what I was looking for. Awesome, pleasure meeting you. Enjoy the day. Take care. That was exciting. So fast pace. I actually loved that game. It was wonderful. I love all of these games, honestly. And the next up, very cute. Right next to the Hippochondri Nomicon, we got Heads and Tails Mythical Pet Shop. Let's see if we got some more adorable stuff, such as the cut out of the casket. Are you guys the developers? Who should I talk to? Who wants have to have an interview? Okay, you are, you, are, you, are in, you are in the shot. Let's go. Okay, what's your name? What is your team? So, I'm Eli, and our team is Milksop Games. And what did you produce for Transfuser this year? What, what, sorry? What did you produce for Transfuser this year? It's entails Mythical Pet Shop, which you can see just here. Wonderful. So, what's the goal of the game? What should I expect if I give it a playthrough? So it's a fancy uh, pet shop management game where you will be looking for looking after mythical creatures. So you've got to make sure they're fed, uh, played with, and um, cleaned, and also you got to serve customers and stuff like that. So, hey, how is the how is the tempo of the game? Is it quite chill? Because we went through Transfuser, there were there were a few games which were sort of they were aiming at calming the player down, and I just came back from playing Recall, which was a extremely fast paced game. What should I expect from this one? So it builds up with your skill level. So it'll start out quite slow just to teach you how to play. And then from there, it'll sort of build up in difficulty, depending on how many tasks you get correct and stuff like that. That's awesome. Skill level, really. Down to the skill level. Okay, I shall perhaps show off my skill level, or I hope not to embarrass myself. Let's go. Let's give it a go. Ah, had to do a spin to fit in with the mic. So it's mouse and keyboard? Uh, just mouse. Just mouse, okay. Easy, easy, I can hold the mic. Just the mouse. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, the ice level is the best one. Sorry? Play the ice level. Okay, ice level is the best one. It has to be Frosty Fjord. Let's go. It looks so pretty. Okay, who's, who's the designer here? Uh, I'm the 3D artist. Great job. Good stuff. <laughs> what, was the, what was the inspiration for the art style for this game? Um, kind of like stylized, low poly blizzard art style was the inspo for this. Okay, so what is what is my goal? What am I doing? Drag the Yeti into the cleaning station here because he wants to be clean. And then he'll give you prompts what he wants you to do. So he wants you to use the sponge on him. So you've got to drag it and scrub him to clean him. So you've got to hold it, yeah, and drag it when it lights up. There, you got it. I see, I see. you got to hold it and scrub I have to scrub him? Yeah. Oh, this Yeti is so lazy. <laughs> okay, let's scrub the Yeti. Come on. Ah... Uh, Clean boy, very nice. And Next quest. Tell you what temperature he wants his water at, and you got to get it as close to 29 as you can using the plus and minus on the cleaning station. I have a very picky character here. Sorry? I have a very picky ha character here. Yeah. Uh, water temperature. He wants it at 29. He wants oh. Oh, you ran out of time. Oh, oh yeah, so stand base as well. Okay, now brush him quick. Let's go, go, go. We have to be fast as well. We did it, I believe. Get a new brush you, drop it. We are brushing the Yeti. Okay, we, we are getting some hard. Who's this guy? He's not the Yeti. Who is he? Okay, they're going to ask to buy something. So let's wait and see what they want. Okay, Ooh. so they want you to feed the Yeti. So get something from here, cook it, and then give it straight to them because they like their food raw. So drag that food over to that Yeti. I see. And he devours it just like that. I see other Yetis and some eggs. Will there be more? Yeah, those will hatch. If you're doing better, then the game will get harder and you'll get more Yetis. I see, I see. So I could, I could end up with an army of Yetis. Can I fit two in the... No. No. I, I think one just went yeah. into the water. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Eh, use the sponge to stop to me. Okay. Let's wash the Yeti. And... 
Is there any other uh, sort of core mechanics I should be looking forward yeah, to? Because we're on a quite uh, tight schedule. So this one wants to play now. So if you drag him into here. So there are few zones that I can actually access. Yeah, yeah. so um, if you pick up this bucket but don't let go of it, he'll throw a snowball. And you got to guess which one of these icebergs it's going to land on. I'm going to go with the middle. Okay, I think I'm already pro at this game. I caught the snowball. This one is losing rep. Uh, we need the comp to try this one. And this guy wants to buy an ice cube. How do we get an ice cube? Oh, I see, I see. I need cleaning. Okay, getting the gist of the game. Now I would like to talk to you about what I've just seen, what I've just experienced. Uh, let's first untangle the cable. Thank you, cameraman. Okay. I really like the art style. I'm a huge fan of cell shaded stuff and the polygons, and I think that really fits my fits my taste. And why this sort of why this sort of like a clicker game? That's not something I have seen recently at all. Well, we were thinking about maybe moving it over to mobile, so being able to just drag with your finger is like a mechanic that we wanted, and it's kind of for younger kids, so like keyboard sometimes is difficult for them to use. I see. So you mentioned kids. So that's the sort of uh, target market you are aiming for? Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Awesome. So what was within the first level? Was I also taking care of Ayeti? Uh, what was happening in there? No, that was the dragon. So if you see up there, those are our three characters. Uh, so if we, if we sk uh, move the camera onto the poster, so within the first level that we weren't in, there was a dragon and Ayeti. But something we haven't seen is the small green almost like a flowery creature. Is that gonna be released in the future, perhaps? Yeah, definitely. So that's like, that level's really close to being finished, that nature level. See, awesome. So, speaking of release, when are you looking to release the game? Um, we're gonna polish this version up and put it on itch, and then, uh, depending on what happens with Transfuser, we'll uh, work on it more and add some more levels. And I wish I I wish you best of luck. If I, was in, if I was in position to be biased or be voting, I would still vote for all of the teams. Everyone is putting out the great stuff. And honestly, I wish you all best of luck. And then, um, would you like to plug, plug your team? And why is it Milksop Games, perhaps? Uh, so, Twitter, at Milksop Games. Yeah, that's it. Milksop Games at Twitter. Nice and straightforward. Okay, why, why Milksop Games? Uh, I think Milksop is like Victorian slang for coward and in uni we were the only people making games that weren't about like murder so we went with that. Whoa, I see. <laughs> a lot of roots. Previous team we spoke to had actually a bit of a backstory from university about their name as well. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to playing the game again because I would like to see how it gets more difficult, the more yetis I have to take care of. It reminds me of sort of like a... When I was younger, I remember the sort of Tamagotchi, the things I had to take care of, like on the on the very small devices. It reminds me a lot of that, but a bit more competitive. So actually hits me at the sort of the childhood level. Uh, yeah, this game. Uh, great stuff. Thank you. Okay, pleasure meeting you. We have to go around, meet other teams. It was wonderful to meet you. You might, if we ha if we find time, we certainly will come back to play the game. Take care. Thank you so much. Oh. It went from a very fast paced to another almost fast paced game, but I, I had to stop myself due to our time restrictions. And well, we have finished the transfuser teams and now we're actually gonna move on to the round five companies. But before we do so, we're gonna take a small break. It's gonna be just a minute. And as we are taking the break, do not turn the stream off. It's gonna be back up. We are just having a, a quick change of, uh, you could call it a recharge of energy. See you soon. Hello and welcome again. If you see any sort of UI that looks like a camera interface on your screen, do not be worried. That is not your screen. That's us sort of uh, refreshing, refreshing the, the power of our camera. So it's going to go away in a second. And while that goes away, we're going to go in into the round five companies zone. And since we got done the last half yesterday, if you haven't seen it, well, we're at least glad to have you here today with us. And we finished on, I believe, Cultivate Before Time was the last game that we have seen yesterday. But there are so many more to actually have a look that look extremely good, just as the transfuser ones. So we're actually going to start with a bit, not as cute as our last game, but a bit more on the grim side. It seems that Murder at Mal Malone Manor has some, has some good content for us. 
Are you by any chance the developer? Is one of you guys the developer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. May I talk to you about your game then? I'm just helping this person out for two seconds. Okay, that's absolutely fine. We can talk about the art that we are looking at and perhaps make any predictions. It seems like another uh, clicker game. It reminds me actually a bit of Cultivate Before Time. Uh, it's, it's a similar sort of top-down view on the character. Uh, I would say this one is very narrative-driven from, from what I can see. And we might, we just might end up being some sort of detectives by looking at the art. Murder at Malone Manor, we might have to discover what happened in there. Game. This is a multiplayer murder mystery game, but we're showing off the single player detective training mode today. So we've got a lineup of six suspects and we're trying to work out who murdered Baron Malone. I think that's very cool. Did you just say it's a multiplayer, but you're showing single player? Yep, so we're showing like a single player sort of detective training mode to act as a tutorial. But um, you can kind of imagine the multiplayer one. It's got like the social deduction of werewolf and the sort of the clue finding of Cluedo and the bluffing of a Victorian Scooby-Doo villain. This is yeah, six players and one of them is the murderer. That's awesome. That actually brings me back to my childhood as well. Uh, I just came back from playing, I was playing a clicker game where, which reminded me of sort of Tamagotchi. And this takes me back to, let me think, let me think. I forgot, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, no, Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo was such an obvious point. Scooby-Doo, I used to watch that so much when I was younger. I still remember, I think one of my favorite episodes was where there was a, there was a huge worm and there was some car that was actually in it, that was steering it. Anyways, if you've seen Scooby-Doo, you'll know. Uh, okay, if you have a second, where did the idea for the game come from? And by the way, what's your team? Oh, yeah, so um, my team is White Pot Studios. Um, my name is Vicky. Um, my co-founder, Adam, he's taking a break now because he's worked very hard today. And so at the minute, we've got our... Uh, this is us drawing the string diagram that's part of the game. So we've got someone voting for who they think the murderer is. We're going to do a drum roll for the big reveal. Uh, yay! Woo! Okay, we just embraced an absolute master at the game, just winning easily. So the idea for the game came from, basically, we'd all meet up for board game night, and then everyone got really normal non-game dev industry jobs, and they're all very sensible, and we decided how, so how do we get around this? Everyone still had time to go on Discord, so we thought we'd take that tabletop social deduction element uh, onto PC, and that's pretty much how we got to this. Awesome, great stuff. Since we are on a tight schedule, I would love to perhaps play the game. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's have a go at it. Will I only need the mouse? Uh, no, you need mouse and keyboard as well. It'll be about five-ish minutes, so um, do you think you'll have time? That's right, yeah, that's absolutely fine. I'll pass the microphone on to my, to my colleague. Uh, awesome. Let's go. Uh, let's hit play. Uh, play again. It seems like there are private matches as well. Is that going to be on-screen multiplayer or is it going to be LAN? Uh, what sort of thing? Hmm, I see, I see, I see. So here we have a lineup of six different suspects and we can see in our investigation board as well. So each of them has a role like police officer, housekeeper, that sort of thing. And basically we're going to search the manor for as many clues as we can. And the more clues we find, the more we can solve the investigation. So you're training to be a nice, wholesome detective. You're not worrying about being innocent or guilty. You're just trying to work out who done it. So use WASD to walk around the manor. Uh, very, very intuitive so far. I, before you said it, I start. I already my already my hand already went there, and I started okay. moving around. So um, E to search a glowing item. Uh, so you go up to it and you press E to search it. Awesome. And so we have an event here. So. We have to, sometimes we have to pick the lesser of two evils, but you can play this action card by clicking and dragging it in. If I play it, does it get rid of it? Yes, but there's only one event, so it's fine. I see. Okay, okay. Shh. <laughs> so you Nobody you clipped that. that and drag it in. <laughs> awesome. So you can just walk away from it to close the window. Sweet. So that didn't have any clues in it, but we'll keep looking for some more clues. You can go up to anything else and search it. Can't search the dining table. <laughs> That's where you present your clues. We've got nothing to present at the minute. So say if you walk up to this, you can hit search. Nothing in there. So basically, you're trying to walk around the manor and find as many clues as you can in the space of time. So find our first clue. You want to take it, put it in your pocket. Uh, yeah, you just walk away from that to close it. And you go up to the dining table, and then you can present the clue. Sweet. So you can close that as well. Now what that's done, if you hit tab. 
that's added that to your investigation board. Once you're done searching the manor, you can use that to draw your 900 IQ galaxy brain strategy. But for now, we'll just focus on searching. I see, I see, I see. I'm definitely looking, uh, aiming for the 9000 IQ strategy, of course, of course. Okay, so uh, let's just try and find as many clues as we can. I think I found quite the clue. I think I found quite the clue, if I just press E. You can't search him, unfortunately, but you can walk over his face. But you go to the <laughs> <laughs> That's, I found the frying pan, okay. So we go back and take that to the table. And then that's what we do. We find a clue, we take it back, we present it. And then if you, you can close that just by walking away. It'll make it close more quickly. So if you're having trouble finding clues, you can use the action cards as like sort of power ups to make it a bit easier. So you can use things like um, give you a bit of an insight into the investigation, tell you how many clues are hidden in a certain room. I think I'll head to the bedroom and use some of them before actually taking any action. Awesome. I'll use the sixth sense. So, you know, there's one clue in this room. And my co-founder Adam's just come back. He is doing, he's doing a wee obs observation in the distance. So, one is in here for sure, so I'm not going to give up easily. I'll, I'll search everything, even the bear if I have to. <laughs> and also maybe the spider. So let's see, there's one thing you haven't searched in this room yet is probably that. Can you search that? Hmm, some clues are harder to find than others. So um, you want to try going into a different room and see if it has some clues as well. Also, I noticed it said room one. Are the rooms numbered in any way? Maybe I'm in the wrong room? Uh, no, it just meant uh, clues in this room, one. So there's one clue somewhere in that room. So it's probably in that bit. But we'll definitely, we can keep searching. It might be there. Did you search it? I did. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, mysterious. So we need to run back to the dining table and present that as quick as we can. I'm very much looking forward to playing, if I had a chance to play this with friends, yeah, at least, so and sort of online kind yeah, of thing. That's definitely, that's where really like the real fun comes from in the multiplayer, when you've got that social deduction, the bluffing elements, and one of you is trying to like sabotage the investigation and make it really difficult for everyone else and the innocents are going, hmm, who's actually the guilty one? So this is the hallway here. So we know that there's definitely at least one other clue in this room, we find the whistle. And we run back to the dining table and we present it. So I'm just wondering, uh, every, every suspect uh, seems to be at the dining table. Will they be expected to be in sort of a call? Can they move around if it's multiplayer? How, how will it work? Um, you want to present your weekly there and keep looking about. Um, for multiplayer, um, everyone gets to walk around just as you are right now. So you can play that to give you some extra time as well. Sweet. So yeah, everyone walks around, everyone searches the manor together. As soon as anyone presents a clue at the dining table, it gets added to everyone's own personal investigation board. So if you are the murderer, say you're the doctor and you're the murderer and you find a stethoscope, you might not want to present that. You might try and hold on to that and make life a bit more difficult for everyone else. But if you were innocent and you found a clue that you think points to the murderer, go and present it. So there's that social deduction kind of bluffing element where you're trying to sort of work out who done it, basically. So I actually have it quite easy in this one because they're not moving. They're just waiting for me to figure it out. Uh, I need to go to the table. I see how it, how it reduces the ability of players to sort of collect everything and then just go to the table. That's why, um, that's why it's really, really good to sort of have this conference experience where you can almost do like crowdsource testing. But we've got 30 seconds to try and find as many clues as you can still, so we can solve that after. So I see, I see. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. I um, actually want to take this game to the end to actually see if we manage to find the the correct person through the clues. We'll try our best. There's about 20 clues in total, and I'm not sure we find them all, but we've been doing a good job multitasking, so... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We managed to, I hopefully, I, at least I would hope we managed to entertain the audience, I'm sure. And... Oh, time is up. So, this is where the big brain, galaxy brain, 9,000 IQ strategies come in. You hit tab. So, we've only found about five clues. There is about 20. So we're going to try our absolute best to make a very educated guess. Um, if you right-click the center of the card, you can drag a string. So if you just right-click the middle bit, and you can drag that to who you think it relates to. So binoculars, be the, the, maybe the gameskeeper or the general. You can see that. So if you just drag it to there and let go. Awesome. Um, 
So once we find as many clues as we can, this is where we start to try and link them together and work out who done what. And whoever has the most clues pointing to them at the end is most likely the murderer. Now you can imagine in the multiplayer one at this point, this is where everyone's trying to draw their own conclusion and everyone's going to be trying to profess their innocence and try and work out who done it. So everyone will be shouting over each other going, it's not me, I didn't do it, that sort of thing. I feel like, I feel like there is a lot of guessing here. <laughs> I, I can actually think it's what I'm wondering. Yeah. How would I know? So normally, normally we would find a lot more well to, to both narrate the game and search for clues at once. So let's take an educated guess. We've got the, the drag the knife to the chef as well. Um, let's see what else. Sharpening stone, drag it to the chef. Okay, whistle, police officer. No. Right, let, we've got three pointing to the chef. Let's take a guess. So if you close the investigation board by hitting tab, and if you want to vote for the chef, this is up there, and we'll hit votes, and we'll have a drum roll. And we'll see how it went. I feel like, I feel like I, <laughs> I've been guided for the, to the victory, yeah. <laughs> Woo! So, okay, let's, that was Murder uh, Miller Manor by White Pod Studios. Uh, normally we find a lot more clues, but we did our best. I still want to talk about it. There are a few questions I got about the, what I just experienced. So, what sort of, what should I be watching out for when I, as I'm finding the clues? Because it seems like every single character, if that's my understanding, have like their own room of residence. Uh, no, so basically it's Baron Malone's manor, so they've all, that's his house and they were attending his dinner party and unfortunately he's died at his own dinner party. So they're searching, the, searching for the clues at his own house to see how it all went. I see, I see. Well, uh, rip the host, what can I say? <laughs> okay, any plugs you, you have for your studio and what can we expect, when can we expect the game to be seen on the, yes, so I suppose, bigger scene? Over my co-founder Adam now into the shot. Hello. Come on in, come on in. Let's talk. So um, we're hoping to have multiplayer done by March, um, which if we're successful and receiving further funding, that's our goal for that. Um, so if this is your type of game, if you like things like Werewolf, uh, the social deduction aspect, join our Discord. It's discord.gg forward slash whitepot. And that's W-H-I-T-E-P-O-T. -E and yeah, come on in, give us some feedback. Have a go. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> Great input from the from the second developer. Great stuff. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Thank you as well. Enjoy EGX. Thank you for letting me play the game. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get absolutely any help when I when I solved it. No no help. Okay. So thank you. Enjoy EGX. Okay, we solved the mystery. Uh, another mystery that we have to solve is finding out what do you do in the Forgotten Sea? And where is the Forgotten Sea perhaps? We might learn from one of the developers. Dear developers, may we have a chit chat about your game? Yeah. Okay, awesome, great stuff. Okay, what's your name? Pleasure to meet you. Hi, so my name is Adam, uh, and I'm uh, one of the co-directors of Beta Jester. Okay, awesome, great stuff. So, Forgotten Sea, where is the inspiration for that game? How did it come to be, and what can we expect from it? So, back in January, we took part in a thing called Global Game Jam. Uh, it's a competition for developers uh, where you have 48 hours to make a brand new game. Uh, and at the time, the theme was sort of around home. And we came up with this idea of a person lost at sea trying to find th their home, essentially. Um, and as we continue to develop it, um, we continue to develop the islands, the world. Uh, the story changed a little bit. And it just really kind of just built up from there. Awesome. Great stuff. Uh, uh, do you feel somewhat connected to the game? Because it, it seems very, very immersive of an experience. Yeah, so um, it's sort of piling in things that are important to all of us. So it's about uh, hope, it's about emotions, um, being connected to family, uh, what matters to you, uh, and also uh, when you're not feel when you're not well, uh, how does that affect you? What's important to you? What do you care about in your life, and all that kind of thing. I see, I see. Very, very immersive. I think the best way to see how the game is to play it. Yeah. So I would love to have a go. Yeah. May I? Let's go. Let's jump right in. It seems like someone flipped the whale. I shall save it. Or Yeah, okay. There it is, we saved the whale. Uh, I'll jump in it. I'll pass my microphone to my colleague. And since it's an immersive game, I'll put on the headset and see what can I expect from the soundtrack itself as well. Very intuitive. Uh, game tells you straight away how to jump right into it. <laughs> It seems. I don't think you 
that our main character is just chilling at the beach and next to him there is a bottle maybe it has a letter in it who knows who knows Some inspiring quotes appearing on the screen. A line shining out, calling out to those who see and wish to wonder. There, there, there we go. Our, our character appears to be a, a pilot of a boat. And let's increase the throttle and head towards the lantern, shining the light, perhaps. It's very calm. It's somewhat, somewhat relaxing to go through the sea. There is something in here. I have, I have an urge to see why are these colors here? Why is there a glow here? I think those were just fish, some sort of fish in there. I must say the water is quite, quite well animated. I really like the art style. It fits very well. I suppose I should be heading to the lantern, at least that's my expectation. I'll try not to crash onto the beach and then just end up stuck, but we, we shall see. It seems as if there is a tunnel going underwater, almost as if. I can definitely see something in that cave. Hmm. Well, we are going into the cave at full speed, so... So, all of these lines that are appearing on the screen are actually numbered. I'm wondering how that ties in into the... How that ties in into the lore of the game, per se. So, I think the game wants me to go to the next cave, which was... Let's see where it was. I think it was this way. If not, we are going to swim to the left. We can see a lot of fish in the water. It's, the game is very calm. I'm not sure what to say. It's just quite relaxing to sit around and steer the ship, you know? From from one place to another. It seems that we, we've swam to the wrong place to find the ship. Oh, no. Okay, there is a humongous whale. Now, question is, is there player versus whale combat in it, or do I just swim around? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, they seem very peaceful. They didn't knock over my boat. Maybe I should follow them. That's the question. But then again, I don't see them anymore, so... I'll just go ahead and swim this way and hopefully find the cave that was in the cutscene. It seems there was something in it. And once we get to the cave, I think I'll go ahead and talk to developers once again about the experience. Which is quite relaxing, by the way. It's somewhat... It really... Uh, gets you immersed in the game, as in, you really want to see what's out there in the sea, you know? And um, since it's quite satisfying to just control the ship, you just want to sort of swim around and see what's out in the distance, because every island might offer something else. And because it's focused, focused on such a sort of mysterious theme of the whales appearing out of nowhere, and then many sort of inspira inspirational, more like poetic quotes, or text appearing on the screen, it makes you wonder what's, what's around you. So during the night, the boat actually <laughs> has a light on top of it, and it, was, it seems like we made it to the cave, and our light is in a way guiding us into it, which I think is a great gonna, interface feature. It's going to jump you around because you're going into the cave backwards. What? That's the front of the cave. Oh, okay. So I actually, okay, I actually, I was thousand IQ and I discovered the end of the cave. I was trying to speed run the game. So this is the 
that's the actual front of the cave. There is a lot of, well, crab-looking creatures with three eyes that glow in the dark. Uh, oh, and we are getting a cutscene. So apparently there is light in this cave. Someone definitely was here, or the crabs have developed their society so much that they created light. <laughs> but they seem to be going out one by one. You guys can't hear it, but I'm getting some, well, quite spooky sounds. I don't think I can move the boat anymore. Okay, I think it's alright. I think it's fair with our time schedule to end that there. Okay, dear dear Mr. Developer, what did I just experience and where are you where are you taking this game sort of? It was very immersive, very relaxing, at least from from well what from what I just uh, experienced, you know. Uh, I guess sorry for going around to the wrong side of the cave. It's one of the reasons that we're here is that we can find out how people are playing it. Ultimately, when the game comes out, we, you could do that and it would be fine and we'd handle it. Um, but it's great to see the people going at the game in different ways. We learn how, what's right and what's wrong about the game. And that's what's so good about being here at EGX. Oh, I see. Amazing, amazing. Oh, so sorry. Okay, so the reason why I went around to the other side of the cave is because I was explaining it to, uh, that, uh, to the stream as I was playing the game. I felt very immersed in the world in a way that because it was in a way sort of relaxing to swim the boat, to steer the boat around and I couldn't see much in the distance. I really wanted to see what's out in the distance because of how mysterious it felt to go into some of these areas. Excellent. That's one of the things that we were trying to bring across. We want people to feel like they can be open and explore. For this demo, we've had to be a bit more linear and guide people around in a very specific way. But ultimately, we were hopeful that people go out and explore and just see the world and see what they want to do what they want to do. It's brilliant, very immersive. So, a bit more about your studio. Do you have any plugs, any so social media you would like to tell to the stream? Yeah, absolutely. So, you can find us on uh, at BetaJester LTD. Uh, we're also on Facebook at forward slash and you can check us out at www.betajester.co.uk. Awesome, great stuff. Pleasure meeting you. I'm glad you enjoyed EGX, and we're we going to get on with the next team. Pleasure playing your game. Okay, let's go. This game was very, very, very sort of slow paced, very immersive, very relaxing. And next one, us, next one up is a bit more, well, energetic, it seems like. It seems to have a lot of zinc in it, no pun intended, although the main character is indeed yellow. Maybe we got a chance to talk to one of the developers. Maybe, if we approach from the correct side. <laughs> Awesome, I think I think we are in. Hello, do you have a minute to talk about your game, I suppose? Okay, that's right. So, what's your name and maybe a word about your studio? Say again, sorry? What's your name and maybe a few words about your studio? My name is uh, Alec Mir. Our studio is uh, Bonzrat Games. It's me and Fraser over there. Uh, and our artist, Nick, who does Transformers comics. Come in, come in. We, we got another developer. Uh, I'm sorry, repeat the, the sentence about your friend that does... Uh, yeah, there's me, I, I do design, Fraser does code, and we're also joined by Nick who does Transformers comics and some Marvel comics like Spider-Man and stuff like that on art. So. so part of this team at Transfuser at EGX is Nick who does Transformers comics. That's right, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Unfortunately, but yeah. That's a shame, it's alright. We got you guys still. Uh, since we're on a tight schedule, I think I'll keep talking to you guys as I'm playing the game. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I think I'll just have a have a go at it. Uh, any any pro tips? What should I expect from the game? I kind of need to set the scene a bit. Um, you are this small yellow robot running through a city that is busy transforming into this big purple robot around you. So obviously anyone inside, if they don't get out in time, they're going to get crushed. Um, as you're running, he kind of runs slowly by default, but you can speed up with, uh, with the gamepad and also wait and dodge and do stuff like that. You can collect the debris of robots that have failed to get out. Once you get enough of that, you can augment yourself and turn into a bike and then a jet to escape to new areas of the city. If you want to sit down and have a go, I'll try and uh, talk you through it. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's, have, a, let's have a try. I'm quite excited. Uh, big, big, if you want, sure, go for it. That's fine, yeah. So okay. why, why this sort of game? Um, 
I quite like transforming robots, but I always felt when there have been Transformers games or games like them, they're just about smashing stuff. And even when you change into a vehicle, it's just another way to smash things. So I wanted one in which changing into a vehicle had a purpose, in this case, to, to get around in a whole new way, to reach whole new areas of things. Um, ah, there we go. But I also wanted it to feel like a disaster movie, so you're always on the run, you're always moving, you know, there's terrible so things happening. A lot, of, a lot of pressure, like it's very emphasized by the game graphic as well. Yeah, you can like, see the whole world's reshaping around you. Mm. So if you press A to dash, oh, never mind, just go for it, go for it. <laughs> I see, I see. Your kind of two key controls at this point are A to do a sprint, but it's managed by this energy meter. So you need to decide when it's a good idea to run and when it's best to keep some energy in reserve in case you've got it a trap to I dodge. Can, uh, it seems I can stop as well, yeah? yeah? You can stop with that trigger, yeah. And if you've got enough energy, you can tell because this light in his chest goes blue. If you press wait and sprint at the same time, give it a go now, the left shoulder and A, press them at the same time. That's what we call a rocket dodge. And you can do that to start reaching different areas, like if you'd done that at the right point, you would have sailed onto the other side of that bridge. So it seems like there is a lot of alternatives to how I'm how I'm going to complete the game, yeah? Yeah, Which I agree. yeah, and you need to be, you know, always trying to build up your momentum, because eventually the collapse of the city is going to catch up with you if you take too long to get around. But you can see you're picking up little bits of junk as you're going along. Which How do they affect me? Initi they so initially they're patching up your health. It's like, you know, there's bits hanging off you, so you're patching yourself up with I a corpse see, of I other see, robots. I see, I see. Once your health is at max, picking up more of this scrap basically puts extra metal on you. You can augment yourself, and then you become able to transform. Oh, I see. So what you need to be doing at this point is trying to collect those parts without getting hurt. You're not doing too well at it at the moment, but no, 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 <laughs> you're I'm a just, learner. I'm, it's I'm fine. It's to fine. Focus on the concept of the game as well. It's fine. And Don't worry. Every, everyone struggles to start with because it's a slightly different way of. It looks like it's a platformer and it's not. It's, a, it's different. It's, yeah. You have to get the timing right. Oh, so yeah. I don't want to spoil anything, but I see number one, two, three. What's up with that? That's to do with the, the modes you're eventually going to get, the vehicles you can transform I into. I see, I see. So you find lifts and ramps that can take you up to different parts where there's different types of obstacle, maybe there's more scrap to pick up, or maybe it's just a dead end and you fall down again. The good thing about being made of metal is that falling down doesn't hurt. Oh, you I just... can just put more scraps of metal on me then, it's okay. Yeah. Hop over that. That's does right. the level ever end, or is it randomly generated? It does end. Yeah. In this demo, getting the third mode enables you to escape. In the full game, I mean, obviously some stuff subject to, to change. We're looking at one endless mode, a kind of score attack one, but another where it's really about trying to progress through the city. Maybe, maybe you're in his foot at the moment, but you're trying I to see. progress up into his. Ankle I see. That's very cool. And his chest and his head and everything. Will I eventually be able to see, sort of? This guy on the screen. Yes, you will. And there's some twists and surprises there that I won't give away now. But hey, okay, that's good. Please don't, please don't, because I would be looking forward to it. As someone who used to be really into the old cartoons of Transformers, yeah. I find the the style and the sort of what I'm seeing on the screen in a way familiar to to my childhood. Oh, glad to hear. Yeah, we want it to look a bit like that, but we don't want it to look like it's from the 80s. But it, there were actually quite a few games here at Transistor that felt that way for me. And I feel like that what contributes to that is that the fact that the indie developers can sort of create what they wanted to see during their childhood, in a way. Yeah, the tools and the, the software and the ability to render are there that you know, we can remake those things without massive expense and effort, which is nice. But we want to make it look fresh and modern as well. It won't just be 1986 on your screen. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we are tight on the schedule. So, any, any, perhaps from you, any, 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 any other words on your studio or the game that you would like to add in? Um, I think the, the big, the big thing for us is that with the UK Games Fund grant, we've been able to create the characters with mix art, but the backgrounds are that's kind of an off-the-shelf pack but with more funding we're going to make the environments look like the guy here so it's going to be brightly colored future skyscrapers collapsing in on themselves like Inception or Doctor Strange it's going to be incredibly colossal and dramatic the environment around you and that's that's the you know the high goal for the, the next stage of this project I, I really love the concept the with with the huge robot I think it's genius uh, thank you for letting me play the game 
I hope next time I'm at the stand, if I manage with my time today, uh, I'll be able to, well, transform, hopefully. Uh, so, yes. Uh, where can we find you on any social media? Uh, you can find us at Escape City Tron on, uh, on Twitter, or if you search for Escape from City Tron, we should be the only hit. Okay, amazing. We have to carry on. Thank you so much for letting me play the game. Enjoy EJX. Thank you so much. Okay. That was a huge throwback as well. Many games today that are just taking me back to my childhood. And next one up is... Aero... Aero... Aero 2? It's quite the name. It reminds me of the other hard to spell game on the, uh, from the Transfuser stand. Are you the dev, perhaps? Yeah, I, I, I can tell by the shit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan. Pleasure to meet you. So what is your game about and what's the name of your studio? So it's, the studio is Madfellows. And the game's called Aero, or Aero 2, this one. And basically it's an on-rails musical shooter. So the aim of the game is to basically follow those coloured ribbons with the ship. So that is basically the music plays and that, the, that drops, if you drop off the ribbon, the, the music degrades. So you lose part of the music, say the lyrics you d would drop out if you're not on them. And then the other stick is a target and you move the target around and you can shoot with the right trigger with a gun or you can shoot, you can hold down with the left trigger and lock targets and release missiles with the left trigger. So it's as much combat as it is sort of a, well, a musical experience, you could say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a combination of both. So it's, it's, um, that's what we're going for, because our background is in racing games. We worked at Codemasters on Colin McRae, that sort of thing. And then we went on to work at um, Freestyle Games, which basically DJ Hero, that sort of thing. And Paul did a little bit of um, D, uh, Guitar Hero DLC. So he got the musical background as well. And we decided that it would be better to do a combination, work to our strengths. I'm the programmer, I know the technical side of things. Paul's worked in the art, art industry, works on the um, music side of things. So we'd got the, the sort of the talent base. So we decided to try and give it a, you know, give it a go ourselves. I, no, I, 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 really, I really like the concept. Uh, I really like the, the likes of the Guitar Hero, etc the sort of interaction with the music and how that changes the tempo of the music. Yeah. I think it's really cool. Yeah. And combining that with the combat is, well, you, you just make it clear by doing that. Yes, yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the things we, we tried to start off with, right on, with the first game, Aero, was it needed to be really, really closely coupled with the music. So, for example, when in the original game, when you're flying along and you want to shoot at something, to prevent the explosions just happening and, and breaking the tempo of the music, we had a system where the missile, the length of time it takes the missiles to come out when, once you fire, meant that the explosions are always on beat. And the same with this one, when you fire the machine gun, the actual repeating sound of the machine gun is all synchronized with the music. So it's, it's essentially you're playing a musical game. It's all part of it. The ribbons obviously are all synchronized with the music. They, they match what the tone, the tempo is doing. And it becomes a more of an experience sort of thing. I, I, I really like it. I think it's, I think it's quite, quite nice. Uh, I'm just wondering, from a, I'm a player and a gamer as well, of course, and I'm just wondering, would you allow for uh, two players to create their own tracks? Yes, well, that was one of the big things with the first game. People, people kept coming up to us and saying, can we put our own tracks in? And our initial response was, well, because the game is so heavily scripted to the music, we could do something procedural, where basically we, we try and fit things to the music, but it never, it would always be sort of wishy-washy, so to speak. It wouldn't really be tightly crafted. Um, so we decided to leave that out of the first game. But for the sequel, the plan is to have user-generated content. So there'll be tools that we're, we're using to create these levels, which will allow you to place the ribbons in your own, so you'll be able to use your own music, you'll be able to place the ribbons and, and change the angles of the ribbons, add specific enemy waves in and that sort of thing the backgrounds and the environments will probably be more procedural but it allows the gameplay elements to be crafted so then we'll have sort of user content sites where certain people who get really into it can make levels and then you can vote on them and, and the best ones get published and that sort of thing i feel like that's a, such a drive for the community of the game as well uh, we are on quite a tight schedule so i'm not sure if we will actually get to play the game but if I would want to play the game, because I feel like I really do. Yeah. Uh, where can we find it, and when? The, well, the original one's out now on um, all the platforms, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Switch, and Steam. Um, and this one will be coming in about 14 months or so, the first quarter of 
2021. Uh, so we, we, an early stage at the moment, this one. This is quite an early stage. Okay, then I must give, uh, I must say, great job to the design team. And um, no, it seems it seems quite it seems quite out there. It seems it seems very well done for the for the amount of time you're looking to still spend on it. Well, the, the first game we were essentially learning to use the tools, so it's based around Unity. So we were essentially learning how to use Unity to make games. And which is why we sort of got to a stage where it was halfway through and we sort of got the hang of it and then we couldn't afford any more time to put extra features in so we released the game as what as it was but with this one we decided to rip it all back back to the beginning redo everything that we knew now we knew how, how everything worked and it meant that we can get things up a lot quicker because we've put a lot of effort into the tools as I said that will be used for the user content creation and things like that that mean we can create the levels a lot quicker so pretty much the fruits of your hard work allowed you to well work better yes yeah exactly so it looks it looks fancy there but underneath is the work's gone into creating the ability to create you know to, to make the the levels quickly awesome awesome great stuff uh, where can we find you i'm not sure if i asked uh, did you mention mention social media yet to us the what, sorry? any social media yes so we've got a twitter handle uh, at madfellows games um, madfellowsgames.com you can find us we're on facebook as well so yeah and why madfellows uh, well, you only have to look at us really to understand. We're a little bit, we're a little bit, yeah, quirky, let's say. That's how you get the best games, though. That's how we get the best games, I would say. So thank you so much for uh, talking with me. I'm looking forward to playing the game whenever I get a chance. And now we'll carry on with next couple of the games. Of the games. Thank you so much. Oh, my voice. <laughs> okay, I think we'll take a break. I think we'll take a quick break. But before we do, we have War to Drive which looks a lot, a lot like what we just saw, uh, in a way, kind of. So it seems like another fast-paced sort of, well, this one is a racing game, no music in this one. And if we get a chance to talk to one of the developers, if we find them, unless they are not around, they might not be around. Let's ask the developer from Escape from City Tron if he knows. Do you have any idea if we can find where we can find the developers of the World Drive? Uh, We're looking for them. We are looking for them. Okay, we are gonna go. We are gonna go, and hopefully get them to talk about their game. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see this way. Hello. Are you that? You don't work for the company, okay? Does the does the guy in the grey shirt work for the company? Uh, yes, but um, I think the main guy who was talking is away at the moment, so he'll come back. Okay, the main guy who that's right. Okay, the main guy who was about to do the talking, he's away at the moment, so we have to wait. So I think we're gonna take the break here, and afterwards we're gonna come back to you with some amazing games. Once again, apologies for any interface you're seeing on your screen if you are watching from home. That's not your screens, that's just us replacing the battery in our camera so we can provide you with some more content. And we're gonna start off with Dancio, I believe. It seems I'll, I'll get exhausted on this one, maybe, possibly. Hello and welcome. Who should I talk to about the game? Okay. Welcome, what's your name? Sam, nice to meet you. Sam, pleasure to meet you, I'm Bartosz. So, what is your game and what's your team? So, it's a mobile dance game on iOS and essentially just dance but with the camera view. So, rather than just being able to see a dancer and then playing it and going a bit crazy, you can see yourself dancing. At the end of it, you'll have a video that you can share with your friends. I feel like that will put a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> uh, I have to try it though. I have to try it. It's yeah. my job to try every single game. So, certainly, I have to. Uh, before we jump in though, what was the inspiration? Why why this game for the, for the Round 5 companies? So, we've been, making, we've been making AR for quite a while and we basically noticed there was a lot of games that weren't working in AR and we tried to think of other ways of not just having like a full-blown scanning technique but actually just using the front camera and that being able to use that like TikTok mechanic where they place the phone down step back and do their actions that way so we basically came up with a dance game we've gone through a few iterations it's gone from like just using your hands and waving them to a full-blown game mechanic which you'll see in a second 
Okay, awesome. I think the best is just to jump right into it. Yeah, it's right. Let's go. Let's go for it. Okay. Okay. Will I be able to hold the mic or should I? Do you want to talk over the over the gameplay in any way, or is it quite self expert Okay, I'll pass it on to my friend then, and I'll just give it a go. I need a warm up for such things. I need a warm up for such things. These are not the pants made for dancing. No, 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 no. Uh, I can imagine playing that though. I really, I really enjoyed uh, playing just dance back in the high school days. So we designed it that rather like just dance, where it's you have to be at home or at your friend's house. You have to be in one specific location with a camera, with a console, with a TV. We've designed it to be on mobile so that you can play it at school, on the park, with your mates and all that stuff, rather than so you can play it anywhere and everywhere. Brilliant, brilliant. I, I really like the idea. You are sort Thanks. of making the the dance games a bit more accessible yeah. and a bit more mainstream in a way you could call that. Yeah, so rather than just being yeah, like I said, rather than just being tied to one location, you were able to play it anywhere and everywhere. And also Admittedly, that's not what well, the end is. You actually get a piece of video content that you can then share with your friends. That's awesome, awesome. Uh, why, why this sort of art style? What are you trying to sort of communicate with the uh, potential players? The art style. We basically, um, a lot of our games are designed for like the teen female market. And basically, we actually got a quite a young female artist for us to design our game and design all the UI, design all the concept behind it. So we found that working with the audience that we are trying to cater to has helped us like progress and make better games for them. I see, brilliant, great stuff. So it's sort Thank of you. coming from the personal experience as well of the designer, sort of personal views, etc. That's brilliant. Um, okay, when can, we, when can we expect the game to be out? Yeah. It's out on the App Store right now. It's out on the App Store yeah. right now. No Android? Not yet. Maybe Not soon. Maybe soon. Okay, we got a maybe soon. I'll take that as a month deadline, maybe. Yeah. Hey, 2020. <laughs> I'm not saying. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Okay. Uh, so, you can find it on the App Store, yes. Dance.io. Uh, any plugs? Where can we find your team? Um, we're called Love Shark. Look for us on Twitter. We're also Mochi Games on Instagram. Yeah, check us out there. Why Love Shark? Why Mochi Games? Love Shark was a character that we had at work a couple of times and we basically needed a company name, panicked, used that as a placeholder and then went, actually, we kind of like it. Nice. Okay. That was a very quick, straightforward answer. Okay. Thank you for letting me play the game. I hope my back will survive. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, enjoy EGX. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next up, we are going to play some Skeleton Crew. I believe that's the one next up. Yeah. Actually, no. We're gonna do some scramble. Next up is scramble. Hi. Hello. This is this is games from some developers from yesterday hanging out. I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Okay. Uh, amazing. Going brilliant. Okay. What is your game and what's your team? So it's a scramble battle of Britain. So it's a turn-based simultaneous dogfighting game. So at the beginning of the game, uh, both players have to set control inputs for multiple aircraft. Whilst time is paused, there's a counter that runs down. When the time finishes, uh, both sets of players move and shoot at the same time. So you've got a very limited time to set the controls for all of your aircraft, and then they'll all move together at, one, at once at the end. So it's like a strategic game yeah. based on turns. Yeah, so you have and it's And it's in the air. Sorry? And it's in the air. Yeah, so it's an aerial dogfighting game. Yeah. I just want to say that's quite very innovative. No, I haven't seen it anywhere before. And um, I'm quite interested how you tackled the 
planning out your moves in the air. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. So maybe a, a bit more on the how you tackle the controls of the game. So you basically you have a, a normal flight model, really. And the fact that it's broken down into individual turns doesn't really affect how you're flying the planes. If we didn't do it in turns, the flight controls would fly the plane as you would fly normally. So what you do is you, say, you see the blue line on the screen there? Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. the flight path of where the plane is going to go and you just tweak your controls as if you were flying that ghost that's flying down the blue line there. So when you set those controls, when the time runs out, the plane will move and shoot down that line. And then you get a review phase where time is frozen again and you can scrub back through the history line to see what just happened. So the blue line there, see the ghost is moving along that line. Yeah. You adjust the controls against the clock. When the time runs out, everything moves and shoots at once. Brilliant, okay. We are tight on the schedule. Okay. And so um, I think I'll just jump right into it. You yeah, yeah let me okay. set up and we'll go. Absolutely. Okay, so we're getting set up at the moment. I really like it's it's quite clean and very clear where where and how the moves take place. So, so if you play on that one, Alex. Right? I'll play on that one. Are we going? Yeah, on we'll on okay, let's go. We are doing a 1v1 with developers. I played Rico at the Chinese Fuser Stand today and I managed to go 2 0 against the developer. Nice. Well, let's go. We'll see how you do against that. Let's see, let's see. Okay, I'll pass the microphone to my colleague. Okay, you're going to stick or mouse? Controller or a mouse? Controller. Okay, controller. So you've got camera controls on this button. Uh, if you want, so the ghosts, the planes are going to fly down those blue ghosts. You've got 27 seconds to set all the different controls. So hold down the left bumper and use the bow sticks. Uh, so you've got throttle and yaw on that one, and you've got roll and pitch on that one. So you've got 17 seconds to scroll to the other planes, use left and right on the D-pad on the D-pad, and that will select the other planes. So you've got a really limited amount of time to set your control surfaces for all your different planes. When the time runs out, everybody's going to move and shoot at once. The first turn is really hectic because I have to describe what's going on as well as teaching you how to play. Okay, I'm quite looking forward to it. My first plane is actually just going to suicide. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I was playing with controls. And that is my first plane. He's, <laughs> He's just, I'm not sure if I can save him. So, so what's happening now? now? If you press A, yes. that just scrubs through the timeline. So you're just seeing a loop of what's just happened, okay? Can I switch the planes? Yes, yeah, so you can Let's switch all the planes. Guy. So he's just curls, <laughs> course, you down into that. I, th I think he's, he's he, just showing he, off. He's just, yeah, so he would pass out in that scenario. We will revive him. I'll save that guy. So you can also look at what the enemy planes are doing. If you can keep scrolling, I you're now that. looking at what these guys are doing. Brilliant. So you can plan your next move based on what the enemy is doing there, okay? Brilliant. When you're ready to start the next turn, press the yellow button, Y, and then that will send a message to the other player that you're ready to start, and then when he's ready, both of the planes get to go again. So, I think I'm ready. Don't run away, man. I'm, I'm trying to see how I... So hold the left button down and move the sticks and those will control the flight path of the plane. There you go. Trying to save this guy. He's, he's gone. Move on, move on. Go somebody else. Okay, so he's coming around. Okay. Time's out. Time's running out. Off they go. Uh, okay, so... They crossed each other, right? Yeah. We have to come back around. So you don't have to loop around and get the other guy. Okay, I'm just going to accept. I feel bad for that one guy, but what can I do? What can I do? Let's, let's try to turn around, perhaps. Go to the next guy. Save this one. Yeah. So he's rolling that way, so you're probably best trying to make him bank around this way rather than go the other way, because he's currently banking that way. So that's an extreme move to go back the other way. So throttle up with that one pull back on the stick and you'll do a big loop. Other way around. That way, not that way. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. And this guy. Okay. He's getting somewhere. Okay. I think... <laughs> all of my planes, I think they just wish they were submarines. <laughs> From the looks of it, they're all heading for water. But... So it's quite a I complex flight model and like learning in this environment is really difficult. You want to spend a few minutes getting to used to the controls before absolutely. you get thrown straight into the battle. One thing I can say though is, I think it's brilliant how well, how the way how the game works, pretty much. So I can the, show you some bits. So yeah, go for it. We are getting some pro gameplay now. Then. So, so this in this looping phase here, you get a really good chance. So you can even detach the camera. Uh, you can set it looping. You can even change your uh, your view there, so you can get some quick. And you can scrub back and forth through the timeline there as well, so you can get a real sense of what's going on in the battle. And it's you know it's a screenshot machine, man. It's a game for making ideal screenshots. It's brilliant. I really like it. Um, no, honestly, the turn-based uh, air combat is quite... I, th I find it quite genius. I think it's really cool. Even though it's, it's hard to get into, I think it's more than welcoming to keep learning, you know? Because it's very, it's very, it's very simple to get into it. 
in a way, kind of. We are short on the schedule, though, so I'll have to, I'll have to, have, I'll have to stop there. Any, any, any plaques for your team and for your game? Uh, so uh, we're looking to come out hopefully next year. So we're looking sort of summer next year. It's the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain next year. So it'd be great if we could coincide with that. Uh, we're uh, looking to come out on Steam and consoles as well. So yeah, keep an eye on jamesmakesgames.co.uk and uh, keep an eye on us for updates. Okay, great stuff. I'm looking forward to playing your game and we're going to carry on for now. Thank you so much. Enjoy EGX. Take care. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. We are in a rush. Oh, oh, oh. If we can quickly get past through all of the crowd. And I believe we are doing glass ceiling. Oh, hello there. I, I, I'm seeing some passionate players already at your stand. So what's your name, sorry? Hannah. Hannah. Pleasure to meet you. So what? Hello. I'm Sophia. Pleasure to meet you. So what is your game about and what's the name of your team? Okay, so we're Story Juice, um, based in Plymouth, and the game's the Glass Ceiling Games, which is basically the Olympic Games meets Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's a feminist punk game, um, so the aim of the game is to smash the glass ceiling. So to do so, you have to rise through the ranks of a skyscraper to get to the final level. So each level is a level of the skyscraper. You start outside where you're slingshotting catcalls for freedom. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it seems like it's it's... Target market is very specific. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, it is. Anybody um, who has sympathy, ha is an ally of kind of the fe feminist cause, men or women or whatever gender, I think it speaks to. But we're very much a kind of like feminist punk aesthetic. We come from that riot girl inspired DIY movement, um, that kind of cartoon neon aesthetic. And then we've had a track that's been made by our friends, especially for it that kind of does some of the storytelling and we're going to get a new track each level. I see, I see awesome stuff. I would like to, I guess, try the game. We are on a very tight schedule, so I'm just looking to jump right into it. I quite like the art, I quite like the art. I think it's very smart. Cat calls, which are these green bubbles that move around the space. So uh, that, that's future levels, <laughs> um, not safe for work probably. But um, so you need to be in quite a lot of space so that you can find the AR planes. And the catcalls will be these green bubbles that, that come out of cones and traffic lights and you have to move the phone around to find them. I see, so I'm going to get them in the crosshair and find the crosshair and, and shoot at them, yeah? It's, it seems quite intuitive. I think I'll just it's jump into it. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, do you want me to hold the microphone? It, oh, I think it's all right, I think it's all right. Is it, is it, can I play it with one hand? Okay, let's go. This way I can give some commentary on the gameplay as well. So, level one, catcall. So I tap to start, and I have to. Well, I have to find the. Oh, I found some. They're quite hard to hit. They see, it seems like they are moving as well. Ah, I see. Now I'm getting it. What's this? Okay, I get the idea. I, I wasn't I wasn't pulling the the string by, uh, back long enough, so I was just kind of like. Phew. A, a, a bit too low. Uh, I guess it seems quite obvious, but where did the inspiration for the game come from? Um, so I was doing a research project because usually Story Juice works as a writer, narrative designer for games. So I'm usually much more of a story driven person. But I was doing a research project on poetic mechanics and mechanics for narrative effect. So, uh, and also thinking about the way that lots of games are power fantasies often, but often put power in the hands of people that already have it. So what would it mean to put power in the hands of the disempowered? Um, and so uh, women who often feel societally disempowered because of experiencing everyday sexism. So how could you make that into a game that had a kind of comic element to it? You know, some of the other levels have got extra. Yeah, I'm looking at, some, uh, I had a, we had a peek at some of the future content or something with quite the, yeah, 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like you're afraid to we were just putting stuff out there. Totally, really, like, that's that right, go punk, unapologetic attitude. But I think it, that's something that's quite good about, like, Round 5 companies and Transfuser, that you're actually allowed to be very creative yourself and, well, put in your game whatever you believe in, whatever the, you feel strong about, I feel like. Would you agree? Yeah, I think it's been a, it's an awesome opportunity to have had the initial seed funding to, to take it from that idea and concept and actually make it and really test out what works, what doesn't, and, you know, evolve it from there. So that's been brilliant. And, um, yeah, it's nice to see the diversity of experiences here. That's, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you. I have to stop there because we're on a very tight schedule. We still got we still got two more teams to take care of before the, 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 the day ends. Thank you so much. Thank you for playing the game. Any plugs, any plugs for your game, for your team? Yeah, so it's Glass Ceiling Games on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and glassceilinggames.com. Uh, website and there's a trailer there so you, you can hear the music which has been especially made by our friends for, for it so yeah check it out online brilliant great stuff pleasure meeting you enjoy EGX thank you so much take care okay swiftly we're gonna move through the crowd into the next game possibly last we'll see if we can find the developer of the world drive but if we cannot we'll just carry on and show you skeleton crew Hello, hello. Am I able to talk to you about, I, I believe, your game? Yes, of course. Okay, what's your name, sir? So my name is Lawrence Bishop. I'm the programmer at Syndicone Games. So, what is the game that you have programmed? It's called Skeleton Crew. Uh, it's a co-op action platformer with a mechanic which is, basically, you can kick everything in the world and it will bounce around and smash through things and you use it to solve puzzles and... Uh, yeah, have fun. <laughs> Are you telling me that out of the world is destructible? Um, it's not like generally destructible, the whole world. There's like specific parts that are like barriers that you want to break through um, and platforms, you know, smash pieces. Yeah. I see. Awesome. Awesome. I'm not sure if I'll have a chance to play. Maybe we could just show a bit of the gameplay. We're on a very tight schedule. Maybe you could take me through the inspiration you had for the game. How did it come to be? So we um, we initially wanted to make a just a uh, easy, accessible multiplayer action game with kind of Metroid Bania influence. And um, whilst working on that, we did a bunch of research for different games, their different combat mechanics. Um, and one of the influences was Smash Brothers launching guys out of the arena. And when we put something like that in and found things bouncing off the walls, we decided to lean heavily into that because it felt really fun. And so a lot of the things that you do in the game now come from that. So you kick other players to bounce them around. You kick each other to revive each other. Uh, kick each other to revive each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if someone's died, you just run over to them and kick them in the head, wake them up. <laughs> it's like that, that thing, it's sort of thing you would do to your best friends in, in high school. If they are down, your way to motivate them is just to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we want to kind of um, have, get people like laughing and having fun together in the same space. Um, which seems to have worked in the show. A lot of people just shouting, kick me, kick me at each other. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant. Uh, I must I must compliment uh, the designer of the game as well. I really like the, the mechanics. However, uh, I find the, the design quite appealing. The really sort of cell shaded slash cartoony, I think I think it's quite good. And I think it really wor works well with what, what you have produced, the sort of platformer, which seems which seems very chaotic. Is what we are looking at there, is that a screenshot from the game or was that just put together? No, so that was um, a, a concept piece developed for the an initial pitch when we were shipping to publishers. So um, Can it get that chaotic? Oh yeah, it can get more chaotic than that. Uh, okay, you got me quite interested there. <laughs> yeah. And it does quite often. Okay, that's awesome. Great stuff. What's the name of your studio, sorry? Cindercone. Cindercone. And yeah. where can we find you on the web? At uh, cinder-cone.com. Okay, brilliant. It's actually right there on the poster. Cinder-cone.com. Brilliant. C-C dot C. <laughs> awesome. Great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing your game. And when will I be able to and where? So we're aiming for release in about September next year, uh, and it will initially release on Steam, and then shortly afterwards we'll be on all the consoles, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. Okay, awesome, brilliant stuff. Thank you so much. You. Pleasure talking to you. Yeah, we're gonna get going. Enjoy EGX. Thanks, we got only, we got only few few minutes, and actually I'm not sure if we'll be able to have a chance to talk to the World Drive. Uh, I don't see the developer, and uh, we must carry on. Well, I think we have to end it here. Uh, 
we are out of we are getting out of bat batteries and we literally we literally unfortunately have to end it here however worth drive it's by team super gong and you definitely you definitely should look them up because from what i'm seeing at the screen the game is very very well done and the graphics are amazing and once again another cell shaded game very 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 much for my liking okay we're gonna mo move away from the stand and we're gonna say goodbye uh we're gonna say goodbye to the round five companies and the transfuser stand uh, thank you for watching see ya